Hi there, it's Karen at Corrie Paper Crafts here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in central Scotland. This is the last of my videos related to On Stage, our corporate Stampin' Up! event that I attended two weeks ago now. And this um, project is the, the swap that I made for our Poodles Day, which was on the Sunday following On Stage. I'm in Sam Hammond Donald's team. She's my upline. Um, so I'm a Pootler, I'm in the Pootles team and on the Sunday Sam had a day of fun and training and crafting for us as well. So it was a very full on weekend. <coughs> I've had uh, quite a few videos to film with swaps and whatnot. Um, so please excuse the fact that I'm now losing my voice because I've done quite a few videos back to back. So this was the swap that I took for my team event on the Sunday to swap with all my Poodles buddies. Um, I want to give a shout out to Julie DiMatteo who's an American Stampin' Up! demonstrator who was the inspiration for this little pouch. Um, she made a similar one um, Halloween time last year, I think, but I've changed it slightly to fit what I needed it to fit. So it's a slightly different size to the one that, that Julie made. And I've added a couple of extra score lines on the sides just to make sure that the sides popped in and stayed in because I was travelling with them in a case and didn't want the sides to pop out. So Julie crafts as the Paper Pixie. Um, so you can you can visit her YouTube channel as well and see all the lovely projects that she makes. And on this, if you can see the shimmer... Um, I made the ice cream sparkly. So this was made using the Brights 6x6 DSP and this is the Granny Apple Green. And if I just open it and let you see inside what we've got in here are three mint sweeties, two um, Twilight chocolates and an Elizabeth Shaw mint. So um, I'm going to show you how I made it. Quite a few people have asked if I would do a tutorial to show how I made it. So I'm going to show you just now. So this time I'm going to make one using the Mango Melody, which is an all, uh, also from the, the Bright's 6x6 DSP paper pack. And you need, <coughs> please excuse me, you need a piece of designer series paper measuring 6 inches by 4 inches. So if I bring in my trimmer to do the scoring on this, keeping the blade well out of the way. Hopefully you can see this. Let me just double check if it's in shot so you can see the measurements. So I want to score this at um, one inch on each side and I'm using the one inch mark on the right hand side of my trimmer because it's easier to line up than trying to line up here when you've not got much to butt it up against at the top. So very cleverly stamping up, um, have put up to an inch and a quarter on the right hand side. The only thing to remember about that is if you're measuring something that you start off with one inch or whatever and then you want to go on to two, three, four inches, remember to turn it round or your measurements aren't going to be right. Sadly, they are retiring um, the trimmer, so it's not going to be around for very much longer, unfortunately, just due to a few issues that we've had with m the manufacturer. But um, we're reliably informed that there's something new and hopefully even better coming along. So that was on the short side, you scored that one inch on either side and then on the long side you're going to score it at, um, let me think, my mind's gone blank, two and a half, I nearly scored it at two there but it's two and a half inches and at uh, three and a half and that's all your scoring done. So I can get rid of the trimmer out of the way. And then, oh, do you know what we didn't do? Put tick marks in, so we'll just do it just now. That section in the middle between the two score lines is an inch, so at half an inch between those two, you want to put little tick marks. That was the bit that I did forget. And then using your ball tool, 
know your scoring tool you just want to very similar to the last video that I did actually add a couple of triangular scores on either side of here just like that and then you're not going to worry too much about them until you've actually put your pouch together so what you want to do now is fold and burnish on all your score lines you don't have to press too hard because it is designer series paper and then once you've done your scoring you should be able to pop both of these over and join them together in the middle so what you want to do now is add a diagonal score line on each of these four sections and the way you do that is you want to bring this folded edge here down to meet this folded edge here and it's easier just to get that to fold right in the corner by popping either your nail or your paper folder into that corner and then bring it over so that those two edges meet and then all you want to do is give that a score with your paper folder so now you've got this diagonal fold here and you want to do that on all sides all four sides so looks more complicated than it actually is I'm hoping that you can see that Turn it round and do the same again. Bring that folded edge down to meet the outside folded edge. Press it down with your finger and then just score it with your paper folder. And last one, edge to edge. Oops, it is. Move that and just give it a score with your paper folder here. And what you want to do now is, if you can see this fold here, it's probably easier to see it on this side. You want to add glue to these sections here, but stopping at that diagonal line, you don't want any glue in these middle sections here. So very, very quickly, I'll bring in my liquid glue, add some glue on these parts here. Don't get it all over your grid paper though. Now that's probably a little bit too much so I'll just bring it up here a little bit. And then the same on this side and that definitely is too much. Make sure you get it into the corner. Now because we're going to put this into a punch to put a, a design on the end, you don't need to take your glue right up to the edge. And then just very gently fold that over and press it down. And that should stick. You can use your paper folder just to and use some wood squish out. And then repeat that on this side. This is probably the bit that takes the longest out of all the bits that you do to make this pouch, to be honest. So you just want to make sure that it's glued down in that corner so that it doesn't pull apart. And a few bits there. And again, some glue down in that corner. Don't go beyond the diagonal fold line and a few bits to hold these edges down as well and then gently fold it over just run your fingers up and down and use your paper folder if you want just to smooth them down and once that glue's dried and it's held in place what you should find is that you're, you've got pouch that opens up like that. So to give that a little bit of time to dry before I punch the edges to put this design on it, this pattern here, I'm going to set that to the side and I'm going to do my stamping for my little sentiment on the front. So I used 
the A Good Day stamp set and I used the stamp here, a little treat for someone sweet and I've already got that mounted on a block. This is my A block so that's the smallest block that we have and it just fits perfectly on there. So I need a scrap of Whisper White card and I used the thick Whisper White just because I was travelling these in a suitcase so I, it had less chance of bending than using a regular Whisper White card and I used a uh, Mango Melody ink to stamp the sentiment. So just ink up the stamp and stamp it straight onto the Whisper White. Just give my stamp a clean at the side. Um, and you probably heard me washing it so if you don't have a stamping scrub I suggest you get one. This is one of the best tools I ever bought for my stamping up. And one side washes, one side dries and if you can see on here, I'm not sure if you can, there are little raindrops to tell you that that's the washing side and a little sun on that side to tell you that that's the drying side. Um, and you can buy the stamp cleaner which is in a spray bottle as well so I absolutely love it and I wouldn't be without it now, it's great. So using the one and one eighth scallop circle punch you're going to punch out whoops, your little disc and before I get covered in ink I'm actually gonna, oh my goodness, put this away, out of the way. Then I'm going to get bring in my Wink Estella which is also fabulous and just colour in the ice cream on the top to give it a little bit of sparkle and it will move some of the ink around as well so that you get a hint of the Mango Melody colour in it. So if you can see that, oops, don't know if you can, it's quite sparkly. And then using a piece of the Mango Melody cardstock and the 1 and 3 eighths scalloped circle punch, I'm just going to punch a bit out of there as well and bringing in my multi-purpose glue again put a little bit of glue on the back don't need a lot and then that's going to stick on to there um, again, because you've used liquid glue, you've got room for manoeuvre a little bit before it dries. And then on the back of that, ready to stick it on the front, I'm going to stick one of my dimensionals. And that's ready to stick on. So now that this has had a chance to dry, I'm going to bring in, what have I done with it? It's over here, my scalloped tag topper punch. That's hard to say, especially when you've done umpteen videos back to back. So, because this was four inches and you scored at an inch and an inch, by the time you fold your edges over, it measures two inches, which fits just perfectly in there. Now, it's just slightly less than the two inches, so to make sure it's even, just turn it over, make sure it's lined up on either side, and give it a good press. And the same again on this side. Oops. Just line it up, make sure it's pretty even on both sides, but that it's butted right up to the top. And again, give it a good press, and that's what gives you your tag top on there. And then all you need to do then is make sure you push in the sides to crease on those score lines that you just made. And this time round, instead of the mint sweeties, some of the pouches I put in some milk and apps and some chocolate coins. Um, they're made with Belgian chocolate, the, the coins, and I'm told they're absolutely, whoops, delicious. I don't eat chocolate, so I don't know. Um, and I just folded over 
the ends of these packets popped in my coins and it's ready to join together with a piece of ribbon. I used the um, white polka dot tool ribbon, it's 5 eighths of an inch wide, you don't need an awful lot of that. Where are my ribbon scissors? Here we go, so about, about there is all we need. And then I just like, oh, that's not very, it's not very pointy. That's better. So fold it over, make sure the pointed edges are together and starting from the back of the pouch. Pop the ribbon through. I tend to put my pinky through here so that I don't pull it right through by accident. Pop it through then at the front. Come on, all oh, fingers and thumbs now. <laughs> and then pop the tails up through that loop that I just had my pinky through and pull it up and then just separate these out a little bit. Now they're a little bit long so I'm just going to trim them down a bit and that's your pouch made. So all that's left to do is take off the backing and give it a little press from the inside, pop your sentiment on the front of your pouch and that's it. So if I pop the ribbon back through this one again and tie it back up, although the ribbon's been on and off this a couple of times now, oops, pop sweetie back in, put the ribbon through from the back to the front. can get a hold of it. Pop it back up through the loop. Oops, a daisy. And that's that one ready to gift to someone as well. Once I straighten up the ribbon. But there you are. That's two of the little treat pouches. Really easy to make. Um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing how you do it. And I hope it was easy to follow, especially for those that have asked me to do a video. And that's those. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.